Oh my god, what episode is this? 87. 87 of uh, Radio Free Ansmith. I'm going to have to figure something out for a number that might be coming up, might be of significance to uh, some people. Nobody knows who stole the chicken. Hmm? Tell him about the chicken. A man walks around with a chicken and nobody Save notices yourself. this. Save yourself. Tell him about the chicken. Maybe for uh, reasons that I shan't be getting into. But this week... We, uh, I've been listening to a lot of that, uh, that Greek black metal shit, that new, uh, Funeral Storm album came out a while back, has got me excited. If you recognize the vocals, good job, that's, uh, Stefan Necrobisius from Verathron, hanging out with Eherusa, doing some, uh, really sick, old-school Greek-style black metal. Now, the thing about Greek black metal is that... It doesn't have the punk background that the Scandinavian stuff does. It came pretty much right out of straight up old school heavy metal. So it's very melodic and it has a bit more uh, palm muting and kind of epic Manila Road-esque song structures to it than a lot of stuff. And any punk influence that is there is ancillary resulting from the Bathory influence. But there is one exception to this. Another band from the old Greek scene that is very much Bathory influenced, very Nordic sounding at times, but also heavily thrash influenced. And that, of course, is Zemiel, who need a lot more attention than they get, given their, uh, well, rather his, Archon Vorskoth's place of importance in the Greek black metal scene. This is the man who played all of the instruments on the first Verathron album, which was the start of Greek black metal. Now, all the music on that album is written by, uh, Stefan Necrobisius, who is now doing cool stuff with Funeral Storm, in addition to his uh, Verathron project and his Katavasia project. But still, he was there way in the beginning, and him and his brother, Eskarth the Dark One, who runs Agatus, they, they're they both essentially two-man bands of both of the brothers. Eskarth writes all the music for Agatus, and Archon Vorskoth writes the music for Zemiel. And despite being sort of in the background of the Greek scene, they weren't really noticed back in the day. But nowadays, especially nowadays, that last Agatus album from Escarth, I would say they're at the the top of that particular strain of uh, Hellenic black metal. They're leading the pack as far as I'm concerned. But we got to go way back. What we're going to do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. When the only people that existed were troglodytes. Cavemen, cave women, Neanderthal, troglodytes. Okay, maybe not that far back, but we are going to go back to uh, 1989 when Zemiel was formed, because nowadays Zemiel is known as this weird sort of like progressive rock influenced black metal zany hawkwind fucking thing that does really live awesome live concerts that hipsters like to whine about the sound check takes too long it's like listen mister i need all my different china symbols to sound properly during my drum solo fucker thanks but anyways when zemiel first started archon vorskoth was heavily influenced by bathory but the uh Epic heavy metal influences common to the Greek take on black metal are still very much present, just done in a more spare and minimalist form. This is a bit more mid-paced when they speed up, they almost sound like Absu at times. And indeed, the bands were uh, good friends with each other. It's very good atmospheric stuff. Rather thrashy, as I mentioned earlier. You can also point to uh, Tormentor as an influence. Also, uh, if you're not down with some dude yelling, Odin, guide my sword in the middle of a song, you probably want to avoid Zemiel. And uh, black metal in general, certainly avoid me. I'm fucking tired of you people, you're assholes. So, uh, yeah, good thrash stuff. But... They show signs of their later epicness as well. This is later in the same song, Battle on the Norse Mountains, off of their uh, first album, For the Glory of Ur. So, a lot of just 
different ancient mythologies going into this. Let me break this down. We have the palm muted guitars coming out of one channel. Other channel is playing that melody in tandem with some very epic keyboards. I think this is like 1992, so still very much at the cutting, bleaching, bleeding edge. Not bleaching, that's not a word. Bleeding edge of black metal at the time. And as we go on through the 90s, both Agatus and Zemiel are intermittently active because they're all, both of the brothers are involved in other projects. There's, a, you know, a couple Agatus albums come out here and there. And then finally, Zemiel comes back with the uh, Necrolatry EP in 1997. So, very primitive sounding stuff. In fact, they intentionally made this primitive. Specifically for this little EP, they wanted to be very raw. So we have a very simple two-note chromatic riff with a uh, nasty skanking thrash metal drum beat under it. So normally you'd think, oh, this is going to be very minimalist music, and the riffs themselves bar, but the way they arrange them gets into the more uh, orchestral sort of thing. Very well thought out and complex arrangements with these simple little... Uh, bits of black metal fear, which is sort of the opposite of a band like uh, Cradle of Filth or Doom of Borgir, where they have lots of layers, but they're doing very simple things. These guys have very simple parts arranged in complex ways. For instance, the riff you are currently hearing is a motivic variation of that initial simple riff, taking the song into new directions to get steadily more epic. That there too, very cool little bathory flourish and a bit of a compositional meandering. I like the drum and all of them this album too. Like I said, when these guys get going really fast, they sound almost like Absu. Look at these fucking thrash riffs. This song features some very nasty double bass and these uh, proscriptor esque, very fast spit out Slayer style nasty vocals and also possibly the nastiest thrash break of all time oh it's so good perfect primitive sepultura style riff so bitches and they speed it up with the drum beats under it perfectly these guys know how to layer their sound and do little compositional tricks to make everything that much more epic. Perfect double bass roll under that just slowly building an intensity nasty thrash riff. Very good stuff. But you know that's all really really primitive sounding apart from the slightly more ornate song structuring. How did they end up becoming like this weird progressive rock band? Well in the early 2000s they started slowly letting more of their uh, Manila Road influences bleed in maybe in a bit of uh, man of war in there too necromancia covered man of war so you gotta figure these guys being associated with them would be well aware of the goings on in the epic metal sphere this one is called the face of the conqueror and it's about uh conan the sumerian but the riffs have gotten ever so slightly more melodic, the production has gotten ever so slightly more uh, digital and clean sounding. We got those uh, wordless choral vocals in the background, making it a bit more epic too, but it still thrashes, don't worry. There we go, straight up black thrash, but just as if it was played by Manila Road instead of played by uh, Master's Hammer. And then finally, we get to the album Nikta, which was a lot of people's album of the year when it came out, or at least if you're a cool dude, a cool dude enough to know about Nikta. Necti. Nectar. Nickel. Definitely an inward. This album was interesting because it's sort of the first and only uh, full-length Zemiel album. Now, For the Glory of Ur, 
and Necrolatry were essentially full lengths, but they were still both only about half an hour long each in ye old Slayer tradition. This fucker is well over an hour, and it's sort of a capstone for all of uh, Zemiel's stuff before they went into straight up progressive rock on that newest EP, which is also very good. I did an RFI on it two years ago, something like that. God damn, son. But I felt like the band deserved a bit more attention. So now we are going to look at Nikta, which, like I mentioned, is sort of the uh, culmination of all that Zemiel was, and he even does stuff like uh, rework older songs in a newer style. So here is the song Eclipse off of the Necrolatry EP. So ye old black thrash. With another exceptionally good thrash break, Zemiel are one of my uh, favorite gym bands because they do stuff like this, which is all very well done. But when you're moving from this sort of uh, nastiness and savagery into the realms of the more arcane and occult, well, it's gonna end up sounding a little something like this. See, same song, just more epic production, but we still got the thrash break, but what do we add to it? What do we add to it? This kind of jazz fusion Mahavishnu orchestra soloing. Very cool stuff. But it still manages to remain completely metal and in keeping with what Samuel was always about. Despite the addition of moves and bass solos and all that sort of thing. So the next time someone gives you shit, says you're not being open-minded enough because you're saying Dimmu Borgir sold out after their second album, well, you just give them one of these. Blow it out your ass. Because Zemiel managed to update their sound considerably over the years and still managed to keep it real the entire time. So basically, death to false metal, and I'll see you guys next week. Get off your fucking face, man. You're giving off the wrong energy to me. I don't like it.